and welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Oceanic Pro League Week 5, Day 2. I'm, of course, Max Atlas Anderson, and this is Zach Rusty Pie, and we're really excited to bring you today's games. They are going to be massive, and look, there are a whole lot of them. Let's bring up the schedule for you, and we'll let you know exactly who's going to be playing. Of course, first up, it is going to be Immunity taking on Sin, and then Absolute fight Sudden Fear, Sudden Fear eager for their first victory. Yeah, looking for their first win there. Following that game, going to be Dire Wolves up against Legacy in the grudge match of the night and Chiefs and Avant to close us out. Yeah, this is going to be a very exciting one. And of course, Dire Wolves taking on Legacy there. Legacy really looking to try and continue their momentum against that team that they were really struggling to take victories off in the first split. Yeah, definitely. They were struggling to find any kind of victory in the first split, but they seem to have come into the second split guns blazing and they found their first one, but will they get the second? Yeah, that's a very good point. We'll see whether Dials can turn it around. Of course, losing Chuffer, a huge blow. But that is, of course, our third game of the evening. Let's start right at the beginning here, Rusty. And let's have a little bit of a conversation about Sin taking on Immunity. Immunity looking a little bit gutted here without Soul Strikes. Their jungler over in um, Korea at the moment, actually on vacation. So unable to play for the side. They've got Otherness there, but it's not really working. Otherness has performed quite well in in. I guess in his stead, I suppose, he's done quite well. He hasn't really been the Soul Strikes that we're used to. The drafting no. of Immunity does rely quite heavily on Soul Strikes coming through. And I mean, they've done well with him, but can they perform against Sin that are, I guess, a more consistent side compared to that of Immunity, who seem to be so polarizing? And as a team in their second split, Cont compared to Sin in their first? It's very interesting to consider. Yeah, that's a very good point. The fact that there is sort of this, this team that sort of erupted into, the, into yeah. the scene and really looked like they belong there. And speaking of which, I want to talk about Juice. This guy, the selfless jungler himself. And Rusty, take us through exactly what this guy does for the team. So we can see for the most part, Juice picks very meta champions. All of the strong Rek size Gragas, Nunus that you casually see. But the way that Juice plays super unique and needs to be touched upon. His KDAs are very polarizing. He's either very good or he's very, very bad. But that does not mean that Juice is not playing his game. The way that he plays for his team is completely selfless. He will suicide if need be to make sure that the rest of his lanes, that Rhymeister, that Rosie, even Cardra now in the bot lane, find themselves with a lead and can carry themselves through the game. If he gets anyone else ahead, then Juice has done his job. And you can't really see that reflected by his scores, but by the way he plays. Yeah, that's definitely true. And one thing that I'm sort of really interested in as far as Jubes is concerned, he goes point, point 0.3 KDA in one of his yeah. games and 13 in others. This guy is all over the shop. And it's exactly right. If his team needs him to be the carry, he can be. He can get those 13.0 KDAs. But otherwise, you know, he can sit back. He can make sure that his team can pick up the kills for him. He can sacrifice himself as long as everybody else gets ahead. That's right. One of the only junglers to actually level two gank in the mid lane also. So very, very aggressive and trying to get the rest of his laners ahead. But you're right, if he needs to, he can pull out the extra mile and actually carry for his team. But, I mean, compare that to Otherness, we don't really have anything to say about that guy. He's still yet to prove himself. And we'll see how he goes against Jews and all of the pressure that he places down. Yeah, and they had a lot of pressure on them immunity in their in their last series actually against the Diawals. Went in thinking, you know, without Chuffer, they might be able to stand up to it. But Chippy's... Standing in his stead in that support role, picked up the Alistair and they really struggled. So we'll see whether Immunity have sort of gone back to the drawing board. And now that they've had a little bit more time with Otherness, maybe they've worked on some more strategies, tried to figure out how to utilize his play style and what he brings for the team. That's right. And Otherness, having played in a team with Zenk, their AD carry yeah. also prior, is going to help them a lot in terms of synergy. Maybe we'll see Otherness focus that bot lane. Yeah, well, we'll see as we hop into Champion Select here, Rusty. Already Azir being taken off the board and Alistair also not going to be played. So sticking very close to alphabetical order as far as this band phase is concerned. And taking a bit of time, but Rhymeister not going to see the Azir, but neither is Cheese. No, no Azir coming out. One of the heavily contested mid lane picks out of both of these mid laners. So Immunity taking that away. And as the team with first pick, they seem to have something else in mind. Yeah, maybe a different first pick. And what do you think the priority could be if they're looking for that? It'll be very much dictated by the rest of the following bands. But with one band each, I can't say exactly what they're going to prioritize. Perhaps the Rumble, take it away from Rosie and get it onto Ryu. Yeah, it's very interesting. One thing that we also need to update you on, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that Trashboat not going to be playing this game. It's going to be Huey in his stead, of course, previously taking Sin to a victory in the jungle role, but unfortunately now sort of in an off role, taking uh, Trashboat's position there as support, and we'll see how things are going to go for Sin moving forward that way. But Callista and Caitlyn are going to be the bands here, and we're not going to see Cardron on Caitlyn. We've got to see him on finally a different champion. Yeah, finally for this split. Something yeah. other than Caitlyn. That means Janna most likely not going to be heavy in the contention also. Those two going hand in hand when it comes to drafting phases and 
We're seeing the Caitlyn and the Callista taken out here. Does lead priorities to other AD carries, perhaps the Sivir as more of a first pick option now. Yeah, that's definitely true. And of course, we've seen Sivir still regaining a whole lot of her former power. So, yeah. of course, nothing really lost there. We'll see whether anyone is going to prioritize that one. Gragas is going to be the final ban here for Team Immunity. So, making sure that they get the focus here on the early game. We'll see whether it's going to be a Rek'Sai first pick, because I could see that definitely coming through here for Immunity. Would not be surprised if Rek'Sai is the priority, keeping in mind that the Gragas has been banned. Those two are the Bash brothers of the early game when it comes to jungle pressure. So, they're hovering that Rek'Sai. It actually looks like it's locked in. Never mind. They have gone for that Rek'Sai option straight away. Very smart first pick and very flexible with the rest of the team comp. Yeah, and actually ban banning that Gragas away meant that um, Sin had to make the decision whether they ban the Rek'Sai or whether they ban away the Rise. Of yep. course, a massively high priority pick. So I really like the draft phase already. But Sin wasted no time locking in Rumble and Morgana. As mentioned, just prior to the Rumble being a priority for potentially both top laners, you can see the response is going to be that Morgana and that Rumble. Getting the Morgana away from T-Gun first and foremost to make sure that it's not on that guy because he loves that support Morgana. He usually expects it to be banned away from him, in fact. And now we're seeing a very magic damage heavy, but support and top lane pick, which does leave open a lot of possibilities for the AD carry and the rest of the map. Well, I'm definitely looking to the mid lane here for Rymeister, of course. Picking up that Rumble in the top lane means you already have a lot of guaranteed magic damage. Yeah. He could be playing the Zed this game, and that would be really exciting. That being said, on the other side of the rift, we are having the bottom lane considered and, you know, Thresh would be massive here for Tegan. Of course, loves his hook champions. I'm talking about back in the day with the Blitzcrank. Of Always with the We throwbacks. heard from him that he's not going to be playing it, but a little bit sad there. But they are going to lock them in, and Sivir and Thresh going to be the options here for immunity. Yeah, so they've picked up their entire bot lane in the one rotation, the Sivir and the Thresh, both very good enabling champions. The Sivir ultimate, the Thresh death sentence can come out and take anyone by surprise or out of position. You've got the Lantern for disengage, the Spell Shield for disengage, so a very good bot lane is a 2v2, but then it also plays to the rest of the team very well. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, we'll see what Sin actually do to answer this one. Is it too early to start thinking about picking up that Zed? Do they still want to save Rymeister for the last pick? You kind of want to save the Zed to the last pick just to know what immunity you're going to play. Keeping in mind, you do have the last pick option here. So you want to see what the mid laner from immunity is going to be. If Cheese is going to go back to that Orianna, we've seen Rymeister do very well against Orianna as Zed, especially in the pre-6 laning phase. He runs wild with that. But again, with eight seconds left for them to pick, doesn't look like they want mid. Yep, and it's staying with the long-range hyper carries here for Kadrid. I was actually going to say that maybe he was going to consider a Corky, but not going to be happening. Of course, Kadrid did previously play a little bit of Corky, if I can remember back far enough to when he was an AD carry yeah. player. But, of course, Juve's back on the Nunu as well, and this is a big talking point. It is. We can see the Gragas and the Rek'Sai both taken away. So, by default, and we saw it in the graphic, Juve's has played Nunu in the past. So, loves to work around the rest of his team, and... This plays to his playstyle perfectly, where he can sacrifice his early game, just control the jungle, maybe get some very strong snowball ganks out, and then work around the later game stages where you can use that blood boil, power up Kadrid, and just be a, a side resonating force, not the direct carry role. Yeah, it's true. And Sin could even potentially think about the Lulu in the mid lane, really go all in on Kadrid here and make sure that they build him up. But of course, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves as Immunity are still trying to figure out their last two picks. Hecarim's being considered for Ryu. And geez, going back to, considering at least, going back to a former sort of comfort pick here for this guy. Yeah, actually locking that one away right now Whoa. with the Hecarim. Their team comp completely finished, and that is a very interesting decision. We have not seen a lot of successful Xerus lately. In fact, it's gone quite badly. Even the last time we saw it in the OPL, finding a lead against the Chiefs. Imagine about 100 odd CS behind by the end yeah. of that game. So, not a very good position to be in. But Zareth fills the wave clear role that they were def not desperately needing, but definitely wanting a sep second option for that. Scales very well in terms of damage and just gives them a lot of magic damage to further that even better. Yeah, and I'm looking at, it, at it, the, um, the pick as more like a safety pick here for Cheese. Yeah. Doesn't want to leave himself open to that counter pick because, of course, a lot of respect has to be given to Rymeister. He's a fantastic laning mid laner. This dude punishes you for everything, like you mentioned before. So, of course, now able to sit back on the Zerath, definitely a safe pick. You call it a safety pick, but Zerath in itself does not have a lot of sustain. It's only really range yeah. that does give you the advantage, whereas we know Cheese likes to win lane. We know he wants to fight and take someone down the lane. So Zerath most likely going to be used aggressively for the poke, but we'll see he's got the heal summoner now as well. And we're looking at a victor against that Zerath, as we did see that one locked in. And yep. that's an aggressive lane, to say the least, right now. Rymeister looking to be able to control. And again, we saw this in the Chiefs game before, line control wave clear.
Yeah, and this is exactly the same matchup for that from that game. I'm really glad you brought it up because, of course, Ch uh, Swiffer, sorry, went absolutely off on that Victor, up by about 140 CS or something like that at the end of the game against Chenny Boy Zareth. So we know that that lane can definitely go badly here for Zareth if given sort of the right time. So Rymeister, we'll see whether he can make it work. Yeah, we'll see what Rummeister can do. And we were looking at the Finnish Sin team comp there, and it is a very selfless Juves on the back of the Hyper carries in the AD and the mid lane positions. Victor's going to be massive in terms of damage output, especially once he hits that mid game spike. Gets one big item and upgrades the Hex core. Probably the Morellos will be around the stage. You start looking for kills. We'll see him roam everywhere if he's not already killing everything in his lane. Yeah, and I actually really love this in team comp just for a team fighting comp as well. They've got the absolute zero and the equalizer. Such a fantastic combo for making sure people stay all in the right position so that the Jinx can just go to town from the back line. Yeah, they're very strong in terms of zone control, which does yeah. play to Cardred and Jinx perfectly. If he gets excited once, it's going to be near impossible to get through those zones, defensive or offensive, and actually get to the Jinx, who can sit at that rocket range and just work around the rest of his team. Yeah, that's exactly right. But ladies and gentlemen, we want to hear from you. Hop over to Twitter. Use that hashtag IamWin if you think immunity is going to take this one. Or use that hashtag SinWin for the fantastic rhyme. Or if you also want to see Sin Gaming take this victory. Of course, the team comp's definitely looking fantastic for both sides. But include that um, IamOPL hashtag as well. And make sure you just let us know all of your thoughts heading into this game. Because I'm excited to see how this one goes, Rusty. And both of these teams with sort of clear ideas heading into this one. We haven't spoken about immunity. What are they trying to do with this comp? Immunity with this team comp are looking to scale a little bit more to the later stages, but not too late where Sin actually takes over. They've got to work around their power spikes and actually yeah. have a strength around their comp. The Siva, the Hecarim, always going to be big, especially once Hecarim finishes that Frozen Heart, maybe with the Trinity Force. They'll be able to run over the top of team fights just with raw strength of the champions. Otherness, very heavy on the vision control slash denial here on the Rek'Sai. Up against the Nuna, will play to his favor slightly, as long as Juice doesn't get all up in his face and deny any chance of vision control happening from Otherness here. But you have a look at Zenk and T-Gun as the bot lane duo. Will they go into the 2v2 is the question, up against the Morgana and the Jinx. I would say most likely, as long as they can control the wave. Yeah, that's a good point. I was actually going to talk about the lane swap in reference to the top lane as well. We know that, of course, Hecarim, a fantastic uh, jungle follow there as well, yeah. is able to pick up that smite, really help out in the jungle. But as far as Hecarim versus Rumble in lane goes, how does that one sort of work out? So Rumble always has a bit of early pressure just from being essentially a resourceless champion. You've got that scrap that can overheat, but it does provide you with bonus damage. So you have a look at the 1v1 Hecarim. If he can get the helicopter Hecarim going, stack the Rampage, then he's going to be quite comfortable in lane. There's a fair bit of sustain that comes from his W as well, which is underrated in terms of how much sustain oh, yeah. it does provide. You, t you compare that to the Rumble. He's looking to get some flat magic penetration items to help him a little bit. But if we don't get to that stage, if Ryu can take over the lane before that, then Rumble's going to innately remain behind. Yeah, that's a very good point. And of course, you know, Rumble, a fantastic sort of mid-game champion as well, probably looking to get around those dragon fights, make sure that they're getting into position so that they can get all of their ultimates down. Is this going to mean that sort of Ryu is going to be in a position where he might elect to do some sort of split pushing, make sure that he can get the flanks at the right times and this Hecarim getting to a point where he can't be soloed? Yeah, it's an interesting question. You look at the side of Sin and you see Rosie on that rumble looking to fight for dragons, looking to control objectives and make sure that the rest of his team gets ahead. But in saying that, Ryu, it'll be very interesting to see what he builds and if he's looking to maintain the split push, control the lane, or if he's looking to team fight with the rest of the immunity side. If he opts into the home guard boots, most likely looking to teleport gank and be involved in team fights. But if he goes for the Trinity Force first, we'll see how he works around the MOBO, other home guard boots, and actually has an impact, or if he dies too quickly. Yeah, the other thing I want to talk about as well, and this is something that we haven't touched on all that much because it's just not that common, but I'm looking at the immunity lineup. Their level one is disgustingly strong for sort of level one CC that they can bring out. Could there be a potential invade here? We know that T-Gun loves to do it. We know T-Gun. We know he's going to try his best to invade. So I've no doubt something will happen unless they completely just want to respect the Sin lineup and not go near that jungle. So most likely from Sin, if they're aware of the level one strength that immunity has, they'll probably group up and sit in a bush and just hope mm -hmm. that immunity comes to them. But in saying that, you're right. The immunity level one is phenomenal. They could find anywhere on the map, just go there as five members, get v wards down, vision control, and if they find someone, most likely going to die. Yeah, that is most definitely true. But ladies and gentlemen, we do want to definitely get into this game as soon as possible. Let's throw it over to Pastry Time and Spawn on the Caster Desk.
Thank you very much, Atlas and Rossi. And we're about to get into this game. My name is Pastry Time. Joining me is Spawn here. And a fun fun way to start another day here of OPL, Sin versus Immunity. Yeah, this should be a great game coming up here. Sin really have something to prove that they should belong within that playoff race, top four. But Immunity fighting back. They've lost their jungler, unfortunately, for a couple of weeks. We see that they're trying to get that momentum together. Look like they had it all rolling for them, but just haven't been able to make it work recently. I don't think the jungle matchup's great. We saw that highlighted by the guys outside there. It's just that I agree, Juice has been playing great. He is someone that likes to really gank for his lanes. But Otherness has been doing his good soul strike. He's been ganking that top lane. Yeah, he certainly has. Get up there, try and get Ryu ahead. He's back on another carry. Didn't go for the Fizz this time, but the Hecarim. And I cannot wait for this one to get started. Yeah, we'll have to see how it checks out. As Immunity 5 stacked here as we get onto the Rift. Up against Sin here for our first game of the evening. Week 5, Day 2 spawn. We are very close to playoffs. We certainly are. And you see, once again, Immunity, that 5 stack, the Death Ball coming out, looking to invade the top side of the map. Same thing happening for Sin there in the bottom. And Kadra trying to get a bit of vision, puts his ward down in the mid lane. Sin as well. Four stack tier going to try and see what they can see in this bottom half of the jungle. Rhymeister throws down a word, and Kadra leaves his post. Is going to see Siva, but will not spot the rest of the team. Yeah, so everyone else has snuck past. They must, they must know what's going on now because they haven't seen each other. Odds are they're on the opposite sides of the map, so good deep vision from both sides. Yep, they're going to try and get a little bit of vision, maybe expecting some sort of lance, but they've got that deep vision down. If they do want to spot up immunity especially that is deep coverage across the entrances yeah it certainly is you know they just want to make sure that they've got the sieve in a lane that she can shove early not be pressured out by the likes of a jinx especially when you lend something like morgana that just trades incredibly effectively always have to worry about that dark binding flying out so in the end everyone looks like they're just going to go back lane swap will be accomplished although Wait a second, Immunity heading down bot. Yeah, Immunity trying something here. Siva and Thresh seem to be trading down towards the bottom side. Yep, there's Zank joined with Tegan. They're going to walk over a ward here. So Sin are going to get some knowledge. A couple of wards actually being walked over here. But Kadrid's already on the bottom side. Yeah, so Kadrid and Huey going ahead down in that 2v2 lane. Something that Tegan was, uh, Tegan was quite vocal about was playing against the substitute supports. He thinks that he can abuse them a little bit in lane. Was confident against Chippies down there. Let's see whether he can do something similar to Huey. And that's a good point, Trash, but being absent for this evening's game means that Huey is going to step in. Normally that jungler, of course, is Juice starting on his Grump into the blue buff here. Going to take it away, but Otherness doing exactly the same pattern. Yeah, and Otherness will just fly through the jungle. It's very hard to counter jungler X. Like, great sustain comes through. Really quick jungling speed as well. So see whether he can make it work. and. Everyone just relatively equal, although top lane, I guess, Ryu has a slight advantage because he took the camp quicker. Yeah, Rosie actually doing a bit of jungling himself. That's quite rare for a rumble, but they'll both be level two. Uh, Huey actually hitting level two pretty quickly with Kadra, so trying to get a lead there as well, but that should all even up pretty swiftly as Juve's going to get sneaky here. Yeah, he's going for some counter jungling early, and we'll see whether Rek'Sai can get there in time. Looks like he's going to make it. Already used the consume. His smite's going to be back off soon. He does pop out the Prey Seeker. Might have a smite battle here over the buff. Otherness knocks it up, and he takes it away. Juve's unsuccessful in his adventure. Yeah, he had the... Uh, smart available, just wasn't able to get it off in time. Credit to the Rek'Sai player getting in there. One thing to note is he wouldn't have known that that was happening. Rek'Sai's vision is quite small when she's in the bur burrowed form, so straight off the Prey Seeker would have got the Tremor Sense going and being able to get in there for the quick smite. Very nice stuff as we see the mid lane. Now Cheese picking this Zerath into a very popular victory. It's certainly been a comfort pick of Cheese's, but I saw the Sivir and was honestly hoping for the Swain. Yeah, I certainly was as well. You know, I guess the disengage qualities that come out of Cheese We'll allow him to do some work as we have a first game. Otherness goes in, flash on Borrow, Rhymeister forced to flash away, flash W, Cheese wants it, pops the heal. Otherness goes in for the dive, but it's almost enough to kill him, it is! First blood goes to Victor! Yeah, one auto attack, they should have just pulled the trigger because Otherness was dead off the back of that. Instead, double buffs over to Victor. Both summoner spells used by Cheese as well, so this will be a tough lane. That was a bit awkward, potentially. Rhymeister, who honestly doesn't need that much help, usually has an early gank from Juves. Just got the double loss in first blood. Yeah, he certainly did. You know, they got everything they needed out of the gank before the dive came through. It was just an overcommitment. And, you know, if you're going to overcommit, just go... Yep. Wholeheartedly for it. Yep. I mean, try and get the trade at least yep. if you die. Maybe, hopefully, it's not a two for one here, but Rhymeister is going to get everything he wanted there in that situation. I am. I do like the aggression, but... A little too much or not enough? I'm not too sure which. Yeah, or just too in between, I think, sure. is what we're trying to say there. As we check out Zank in the bottom lane, had a hard time against King. King on that, Caitlyn was really able to shove it. Wow. Rosie in trouble, gets unburrowed there. Ryu, though, going to get that kill. And Otherness goes off this week. Yeah, so Otherness 
we said, trying to do his best impression coming through for Soul Strikes, and that's another gank. He's heading towards mid lane. There's going to be a third, I think. And I have to say, no mid gank, very aggressive, maybe not working out. Looks a bit silly. Top lane gank looks great, though, onto Rosie, really trying to get Ryu going on the horse. Doesn't go mid again, but kind of as soon as you said it, I was like, yep, that would not be surprising given the pace of this jungle. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. You know, one strategy that seems to be working right now for immunity is get Ryu ahead. He's improved so much in a split of League of Legends. Looks to be a pretty consistent top laner now. Had a good game on Fizz and now looks to be doing the same on Hecarim. And I think, like we've sort of seen with Soul Strikes coming in, paying more attention to that lane, just feels like he gets more unlocked when he's got a bit of a lead in his lane. Yeah, he's one of those guys that struggles to win the lane by himself, but actually uses jungle resources pretty well. Talking about the Fizz lane uh, game, of course, talking about the Rumble game where he went completely bonkers and was able to take over. So just think that they do a good job of being able to catapult him ahead. Revisit here onto Rhymeister. Rambaro hits, Gravity Fields down, though. Stun misses from Cheese. W is going to go wide as well, and Juves is now going to come in. Otherness getting quite low here as Rhymeister going to look for the kill. He might get two kills. The bat as many minutes. He does get it, and Cheese now going to get blown up by the damage. Juves going to chase in. But that's another kill for Victor. Yeah, Cheese. Oh, got him. He's trying to do it. W lands it. He's going to keep going. Lasers down. Cheese gets the kill, but Juice gets returned. Yeah, so Cheese trades back really well. Nearly got both of them there. If he had have hit any of the first round of spells, that would have definitely been better news for immunity. But that's what I'm talking about. Cheese, this aggressive player. Just stay aggressive, Cheese. Even if you have to trade in the end, he's confident that he's going to be able to get ahead with a gold lead. And aggressive, Zerath, not something we normally associate with the champion, but Cheese certainly makes it work a lot of the time. Yeah, he certainly does. You saw him up there, nice close range, making sure the Qs are coming out a maximum time. Actually traded pretty effectively right there, and he's gone the double Doran's ring to make sure he stays even in the lane. Yeah, so 1-1-0 one, one, and zero now there for the Zerath with the Fiendish Codex Ooh. as well. Kadra gets hooked by Tigon. Boomerang Blades forced out the heal. And that's really strong stuff there. As we do have a pause here in the game, but this game's crazy already. Yeah, it certainly is. You saw that in the bottom lane, starting to get ahead, Tigon with those heat-seeking hooks, able to take advantage of that. And Zenk really is a player for me that we need to watch. He fell behind against King, and King... Honestly, just had a great performance. You know, we questioned how informed he was coming through with the chopper loss as well. Able to step up in that game and completely dominate on the Caitlyn. This time, Zenk has got more to prove because he's a young player, 17 years old, coming into the OPL. I think it's his third week in now. Yep. Needs to make sure that he can play up against these great 80 carries. And it's hard. I mean, Siv is a great champion. He's certainly played well, especially when T-Guns helped him get ahead. You can see the potential in the young player, but he was basically a sub for the team, kind of, Falls into the starting roster when Danny and leaves. And it's a tough spot, especially when it, you are playing, again, the likes of King, the likes of Radio. Yeah, and the thing I like about him, you know, is that he follows T-Gun's lead. That we talk about T-Gun, he's experienced, he's a competitor through and through, and he likes to be the one that's proactive. The problem with the T-Gun, Denny and Lane, was that Denny and was that person. He wanted to be up in their faces, and T-Gun honestly looked like he was trying to play, like, save the Denny in at time, like, just running around the map. Instead, they've gone to Zank now. I like his Jinx, I think it's very good. His Sivir is something that he's played a couple of times now, still uncertain about it, but he seems to, I guess, do fine when he is even in the lane. Yep, we do have a replay here as well. Let's watch the mid lane gank again. Yeah, so Otherness flies in, this is a repeat gank, and you know that spell missed, and then the second one, Rhymeister able to skirt the outside, and it looked like it was just gonna be a one for nothing yet again, but Cheese, with the auto attacks, able to do a lot of damage, you know, lines up another Q, able to stay consistent in this fight, and he turns it back around as soon as he has any advantage and it threads the uh, stun through there, able to line up the next combo. Gets a double Q as well. Able to try and get uh, Juves a little bit lower, but not able to come out with a two for one. Yeah, and again, that's a thing we've seen from Cheese. Even on the likes of Zareth, he always plays aggressive. His laning has been impressive to me. Maybe his team fighting, especially on Champions, it is maybe learning like his ear, has maybe not looked as clean as some of the other mid laners, but his aggression has never left that lane. Yeah, it certainly hasn't, you know, and a lot of what OPL mid laners especially respect is how much that you uh, made work in that mid lane. And Cheese is someone that makes you work for every CS, likes to stay nice and aggressive and try and stay up in your face even when he's behind. Well, he does indeed. And we do pop back into the game. We can see 1-1-0 one, one, versus 2-1-1. One, one. So those mid laners getting a lot of jungle attention. Even Juve's on the Nunu coming in to try and make that happen. But otherness, he's just pretty much been a non-stop gank train. Yeah, exactly right. You know, last week against the... Uh, on Monday against the Dire Wolves, sorry, Cheese struggled with some ganks coming through there. We expected Juice to do the same. But Otherness staying relevant in the game, making sure that he's backing up his mid lane. Yeah, Ryu also reaping some benefits there. 10 CS ahead 
Oh, sorry, 20 CS almost ahead of Rosie there in the top side with the Ignite and some early Merc Treads already. So he's looking great. Just one gank and Ryu's just enabled. Yeah, exactly right. And you know that's what we were talking about. He just turns that gank into pressure around the map. All of a sudden, Rosie's getting shoved in, forced to farm under turret. And you know, Rosie new to the mid lane position, but one of the veterans of the scene as Juice goes for an invade. Yeah, but I'm just gonna spot him out. Cheese is here, Ryu's here as well. Maybe too many friends here for Juice. Ultimate's used there by Ryu. Stun follows in and Cheese, easiest cleanup of his life. Perfect layering of CC there. Made sure that the fear was back towards Cheese. Gets the stun across, some nice low as well as Huey just stopping T-Gun's recall. But Cheese now with an extra kill, up back again in that mid lane. Try and see if he can make anything happen. Yeah, we'll see where those items go as the AD carries have purchased their first few. It's BF sorts for both there, so fairly even, both in items in CS. And we look up, three, three a kill, three kills, sorry, for each side here, and very even in gold, nine minutes in. Yeah, exactly even, and you know, Cheese with that blue buff now starting to look very aggressive, zoning Rhymeister away. And this is something Rhymeister wouldn't be used to. No, I mean... Getting zoned off creep waves. Yeah, he's normally the one doing this to other people. And Victor, we called him a short mid-range mage. You can see where he might have problems in the matchup. Yeah, exactly right. You know, this is, I guess, what Chenny Boy was trying to do to Swift for the first time we saw this massive uh, matchup. Stay aggressive, make sure you're equal in farm, and then use all that additional wave clear and range to try and shove the Victor out. You can see Huey and Juves, though, you know, team up for a bit of a sneaky dragon. Nunu level 6 with only a single point to consume, but with his smite calling card over, two minutes in are pretty easily able to take this. Yeah, they came in through the back of the um, blue buff pit, sorry, so they've not been spotted out. That will be the first dragon going across the sin in about 10 minutes. Yep, so take that away there. Looking for the second round 16, could potentially snowball that one forward and get themselves ahead in the dragon count. But home guard's already completed for you. They want to fight. Yep, Kadra grabbed there by T-Gun, comes in, Box goes down. That's going to force a flash up, but Huey's been caught. Gravity Field's going to cut them off the choke, but Cheese gets a kill under Huey. Juzo goes in as Ryu comes through and just gets destroyed by Rhymeister. Now Rosie's here. He's about to overheat. He's got to be careful. He pops down the equalizer. Other wow. times in. Cheese gets in, gets the kill. Three bolts land there from the ulti. Cheese lining it up for another. Kadra needs a hook there by T-Gun. Zeng's still fighting and he's going to get the kill. Will Siver and Cheese just misses out on Juves. And it's a bloodbath. Two for two. You know, you mentioned Rhymeister. Good job to blow someone up. But T-Gun and Cheese in that fight just went berserk. I don't know if they missed a skill shot between them. T-Gun especially lining up two death sentences. They're going to be able to grab a turret off the back of it and an immunity. We keep on talking about the lineage of this team. Like, T-Gun staying over, loves to fight. Ryu joined him in that. But then they added Cheese from YSSC. And they're at home when they're in the early team fight. Sin need to be careful if this is how they want to play. Yeah, and you can see just the, the raw regression from those two veteran players paying off nicely with the mid lane turret now as well. So about 2,000 gold ahead or just under now the lead for immunity. And again, the first six minutes are crazy. The next six have been pretty insane as well. Yeah, so, and now all that gold is just funneled into the mid lane. If you're an AD carry in this game, you need to be so careful because they're so rapidly accelerated. You get hit by Cheese, he stuns you. He's going to destroy you within a combo. But the same thing about Rhymeister, that ultimate will rip Zenk apart. I mean, the difference there has to be the range between these mages, right? Because clearly they're just not created equal as far as that's concerned. Yeah, no, they certainly aren't, you know, and even more attention back towards that mid lane. Ryu was pu uh, pinging that one out crazily. And you're right, the fact that Zeris kind of that weird poke mage where if you walk towards him, he has a lot of upfront bursts in his kit as well. So you have to be careful about that. But he also has that huge wave to be able to shove you back, get you underneath your turret. So he kind of fulfills both roles. Whereas Victor, you just do not face check because yeah. he does so no, much damage. Just don't walk into his range at all yeah. or blow you up. I mean, how much of the early game do you think is influenced by the junglers here? Because Juves just can't be as aggressive on the Nunu versus Otherness, who's just been going crazy on Rex. Yeah, well, that's what he's recognized. You know, Otherness, credit to him, has said, I'm going to get counter jungle probably if I try and turn this into a farm off. So I'm just not going to be in my jungle. I'm going to make sure that Juves has to counter gank me and I'm going to stick around that mid lane, the area that I know that Sin like to focus, and we're just going to create fight after fight. And honestly, when you have veteran members like Cheese, like T-Gun, they just know how much they can eke out of their kit, especially in team comp situations, whereas I'm sure Rhymeister 1v1 would be in a similar situation, but you're just not used to playing 2v2, 3v3 skirmish League of Legends that happens so much on the competitive level. Yeah, and Rhymeister clearly... It's been paid a lot of attention this game. Probably not the kind of attention he wants here, as we do have a pause in this game as well. I mean, Rhymeister, he's not even just getting a jungler in the mid lane. Like, Ryu's starting to roam down there as well. Yeah, exactly right. And that's what's happening. 
Other lanes are overflowing into mid, and this is one of the things in the meta. If bot loses very heavily, all of a sudden you've got an AD carry and support in your lane trying to shove in your turret. If your uh, top laner is behind, all of a sudden you have this roaming Hecarim or Fizz, something like that with CC, and a good ultimate to be able to impact your lane. So mid laners definitely need to be very careful because it's not just the jungle and... Uh, mid laner you're worrying about, it's everyone else on the map that likes to come into that short lane. Yeah, we've already seen Tegan landing those skill shots. He's a scary roamer. I guess moving just to the point of the game right now, about 12 minutes in, Dragon's gone down over for Sin, but we do have the first turret there for Immunity. As far as, like, I guess mid-game goes, because we're sort of heading that direction now, are Immunity happy with the situation they've sort of built for themselves? Yeah, Immunity are really happy, you know. Generally, when you're against the Nunu, you seed first Dragon anyway. It's either through a lane swap or the fact that Nunu just has superior control over that area, so they'll probably expect that to go down. What they want to do is unlock Ryu in that top lane because they've got the Sivir going. And you know, we talk about Hecarim, he needs a facilitator, someone that speeds him up. And as soon as that happens, he's just going to make Kadra's life hell for the next couple of minutes. Kadra not ahead, 0 1 and 1 at the moment. As soon as Hecarim's in his range, that is a very serious kill threat for him. It is indeed. And we're going to have another look at a replay here from this game. This is sort of touch by Con. Watch the skill shots here, Spawn. <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So, you know, the way this fight started, they just take Dragon, but they want to protect their pink wards. What Sin should have done is, okay, the pink wards serve their purpose. They got us, Dragon. Let's just back away. But they decide to fight. And if when we roll this one out, you see T-Gun, he just wants the fight as well. He lands the hook onto Cardron. The teleport comes in, zones away three members, even though he gets blown up straight away, Ryu. And she's just nailed everyone with everything. Watch him on the back here, able to take Rosie out of the fight as well. Get the whole combo across. And T-Gun, in the meanwhile, is just hitting death sentences. He hits another hook here over the wall. Takes Kadra out of the map. Rhymeister lives off nothing. Jubes is running to the wings because he doesn't live off it on anything. And knowing the fact that no one can contest, they move into the mid lane, take out the turret. Yeah, and I, I kind of watched her back and I still don't know what Ryu was doing there. Because I don't think he had his ultimate either. He just sort of... Sat there and sponged some victor damage. He legitimately did the, I'll just be a presence and cut people off. And it worked because the Sivir, very short range, didn't get zoned away from Victor. That's what Victor wants to do. And Cheese, honestly, just had a field day. Other than to stun people up and he was just able to get the combo, all three bol bolts of the ultimate landing. Two of them hit two members as well because they were stacked on top of each other. And as a Victor player, that just makes you really happy. Yeah, I mean, you saw, especially from Rhymeister, he's, you know, put the gravity field down to the choke and immediately said, all right, we'll kill the people on the other side. Yeah, exactly right. You know, and sorry, I meant Zareth, not Victor. Yeah, so Rhymeister, he was zoning his area. He was doing exactly what it needed to. Kind of the lasers like the equalizer, you can't run through that gap because Rhymeister will just do all all that damage with that in the ultimate. So he played well. He kited it back, was making sure he was very safe. It was just the fact that T-Gun landed the second hook onto Cardrid that really affected the yeah, outcome. T-Gun's been playing great so far on the Thresh. Two assists here and immunity taking button. Six kills. We pop ourselves back into the game. You can see the gold lead about 1,500 gold or so for I am. So that one tower doing nicely, but not an overwhelming lead just yet. Everyone's still scaling up here. Yeah, they certainly are. And you know, you have to watch because during the mid game, as soon as one or two items has been finished up here, it will definitely be immunity that is stronger, quicker. And double longsword and a ruby crystal in top lane for Ryu. Wait. Oh, yeah. There's a phage. There you go. There's a phage, but I don't know what the second longsword's for. <laughs> it's a mystery longsword. It is. That is aggressive, though. It's incredibly aggressive, you know. Still 14 CS up in the lane. 1-1-1. One, one, and one. It's having a pretty good game. Maybe something like a hex drink of some mid-game power. We'll have to see here. Zenk and Tigon still on the bottom side of the map, clearing out some creeps here for themselves, trying to push down some turrets. Impressively, Zenk actually ahead here in the matchup, 106 to 91 CS. Yeah, it certainly is. Being able to shove it in here onto Cardridge, just utilize a Sivir's kit. Also has that kill that gave him a little bit more gold early in the game, so he's just been putting it to good effect. As indeed as Cheese and Ryu back in the top side. Cheese now, the one starting to do the roaming, actually leaving Rhymeister in that mid lane. Trying to affect some other areas of the map. Other than us here lining it up as well. But Tegan just going to run in here. Cardred forced to use that hook. Great follow up there onto Huey. Box goes down. Morgana's ult pop, but that's a great kill. Yeah, it certainly is. You know, they just baited it out perfectly. Waited for the Black Shield to come through. Swap Tigers. Made sure they got the knock up. Otherness has been everywhere in this map. Five out of seven kills contributions. Having a very good game. He's indeed. And Tegan really following up nicely as well. As Rhymeister trying to protect Kadrid in the bottom side of the map, but I don't think they can hold this turret. Yeah, it looks like they want to fight for it. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Cheese is back up there. Surprise Rhymeister there as well, but Cheese 
is looking for more ganks here. Good ultimate by Victor will keep them off the tower in the bottom side of the map. And as Dragon's back in a minute 50, we have a big fight brewing here. Yeah, we certainly do. And you know, you look at Rosie, he's fight ready. He wants to be able to get in there with the double pen items. Ryu, he's picked up the home guard boots. Definitely wants to be able to impact somewhere else on the map. So everyone would be liking their chances right now. Maybe only Kadrid, who wasn't able to complete the Infinity Edge, would be a little bit hesitant for this one. Kadrid, yep. A little short there on the gold. It doesn't even have boots one, actually, so going to struggle against the Hecarim, potentially. Tau goes down on the bottom side as well. I am actually going to grow that gold. It is Alvinus in the top side. Ryu's already ulted. Trying to kill Rosie. You don't quite get it. But they'll be safe. Yeah, just a lot of damage going on to Rosie. They've sent Cheese up there as well, trying to shove it in as quickly as possible. They're just going. <laughs> they really want it here. Stun's going to miss the Cheese. Just gets the Q there as Juice will rotate in to make sure the tower stays up. But that's a good play. Dragon up in a minute. They don't have to worry right now. Yeah, exactly right. They just force everyone back. Top side of the map is now where all the pressure is. Cheese. Took a couple of extra turret shots he probably didn't need to do, but you can see what he's trying to do. Take that four kills, get into the side lanes and start getting a lead everywhere else. And she's just such a unique player. Even on a champion like Xerath, you'd normally think, you know, a bit more passive, kind of defensive, likes to wave clear. He's roaming on Xerath of all champions. Yeah, you know, he still has some CC in his kit, and Xerath, one of those strange mages, has a slow, has a stun, so not a horrible roam, uh, roamer, and also pushes out very well. Oh no, I I'm loving the creativity here, as T-Gun's gonna come in. The real killer here is Rosie gonna get lined up, but Juves eats the hook instead. Otherness here again gets the Umbaro. Zanks pop the ulti, but a good equalizer gonna keep them safe. Yeah, a zoning equalizer coming through from Rosie, I think, fair to say. Just didn't want anyone underneath his turret. Meanwhile, Real winner is Ryu down in the bottom lane, has just absorbed three waves of three CS, and they've shoved Sivir into top. Once again, trading a lot of dragon control, but for probably a turret up there. Yeah, and if they can keep getting gold for these dragons, it won't matter that I am maybe just can't get dragon number one, because they're going to take another tower here and force him to do something. Yeah, they've just opened up the entirety of the match. We already uh, mentioned the Sivir ultimate into Ryu being able to impact team fights. The longer this goes, the more open the map becomes. I think the further immunity are actually ahead. Yeah, you can see Sin. They're going to very comfortably get this dragon. Juice will come in. Probably not even needed here for both Smite and Kinsey, but we'll come in to clean it up anyway. But it's two dragons there to three turrets now for I am. And you can see seven kills to five, 4,000 gold ahead for immunity. Yeah, immunity just don't care. They're just trading gold objectives for, I guess, dragons right now. And gold objectives at this point in the game win out until about the 30 minute mark where Sin will have the pressure of the fifth dragon and all the other items going towards the 6% stack when it really helps you out. But right now, Immunity, you can see even through their item purchases, looking good. Yeah, and we see a lot of this, I feel like, in games of League of Legends nowadays where you have a choice between trading that non-god objective or the gold objective. As Ryan mentioned, she's going to fight. That's not very fair, though. Tegan, they're going to run in, place him out. Fox down there as well. Ovenus gets the knock-up. Cheese trying to poke his way in, fires a couple of bolts of the ult, and will get the kill there. Ult blocked there by Ovenus as the rocket goes wide. Ryu dives in, goes in onto Jooves. That's the kill they want to chase. Smites them down to slow them. And that'll be just enough to keep Nunu safe. Yeah, one for nothing coming through. A lot of ultimates and cooldowns actually burnt for that. But not very much effect. Huey just got out with his life, but another push coming through. And I was trying to ask you, Spawn, is it composition-based, this choice, as far as trading goes, or immunity just going crazy? I think immunity just want to fight. Yeah, they do indeed. Otherness coming back. Rosie going to get smited away. Lantern there is going to save Rek'Sai. Otherness is Tegon. not moving real quick. No, there. very slowed down, but you can just see this game's accelerated so much, and if it's not a comp thing, it certainly seats I Am Style. Yeah, it certainly does. You know, we saw Avant do this the other week, where they thought they played way too passively against Absolute. So the next game against Direwolves, they just pushed every advantage they got. And it looks like Immunity are on the same page. They don't want to win or lose playing conservatively. They want to go out or win with bangs. And, you know, you can't fault them right now because they're certainly making an impact. They are making a very large impact in this game. You can see Infinity Edge and the Zeal plus a dagger there for Zank. So Berserker is coming through soon. Rabidon's death cap all, already completed for Cheese. A quick aid is for Otherness, and the cherry on top for you is probably good enough for that Trinity Force coming in very quickly, if not now. Immunity, they want to go real soon. Yeah, they certainly do, and you know it's Rhymeister on the other side of the rift that really is up there in power. You saw how much damage he did to Cheese alone. Now he's caught out T-Gun, who just escapes. I mean, T-Gun just doesn't care at this point. Righteous Glory coming through. He's been doing 
almost all of the engages. Yeah, he certainly has made sure that he's the one up there, front of the team, looking for another. Ningle going in, Rymaster, good juke of the hook, puts the gravity field down to peel them away, but Sim at this point, just trying to protect these tier two turrets, and Ryu is still farming in the top line. Yeah, Ryu just cannot be stopped right now. You know, Rosie, he can't really contest 1v1. Ryu can't be shoved off the minion wave. Probably not in kill range yet, but as, that, as soon as that Trinity Force comes through, that might change. It might. I mean, we've seen IM Willington put three, four people in the top lane. Wouldn't be surprised to see Sin maybe let it slip in the mid lane and then just four people to descend on Rosie. Oh, wow. Ryan Master eats a stun. Good stun. Hook lands onto Juice, but just to peel him off here, Tegan has to do a couple stunts here. Huey oh. going to get slowed down, and now the ulti out for Cheese. Bolt hit. Last one just misses, and Morgana lucky to be alive. Yeah, and that was like a slither away. That's the danger of actually going Moby Boots against Aerith, because as soon as you're in combat, you slow down to that Boots 1 speed. Generally, you want to go Merc, Trent, or Tablet just against Zareth because of that reason. Yeah, interesting stuff there. Makes a lot of sense as I am still looking for these turrets. The short range Sivir makes it a bit tricky, but they can get on top of them. It dies quite quickly in Sin. They've got Rosie off to the side. The teleport down for Ryu, though. He's actually just coming in for an ultimate to zone them off, and they will get the turret. Yeah, you know, Minion unable to be killed. Get some good cooldowns coming through there. Able to rotate around into the jungle now. Pick up as much farm as they want. And I wouldn't be surprised if that was Ryu that went and got that minion wave because he's very close to the Trinity Force. Probably wants to grab some more farm. I'm going to grab them. We still don't know what the long shot's for, by the way. Might have just been a, I have this money, I, need, I want to be stronger purchase. But building very comfortably towards the Trinity Force. Got the Sheen and the Phage done already. Yeah, exactly. And you know, you see them pushing it again. Ryan Oh, well, he's the hook target. Black Shield's good. But Ryan's going to dive straight in after it breaks. Little too much, so has to lantern out through the gravity field. And Chaos Storm chasing him away, but Immunity somehow getting out alive. Ryu is playing this game to like a next level of aggression, let's just say. Dives a turret with everyone still up. Knocks Tubes out of it equal uh, out of his rumble ultimate, sorry, the absolute zero. Wow, that was bad. The new new yeah, ultimate. I, I knew what you were talking about. I was about. looking at Rumble. Yeah, you were. That's okay. He was on screen, pushing in the top side, trying to get a little bit of CS coming to you. But Ryu, that very aggro pony, has already got his Trinity Force. Finally, if he does that dive again, it might be a little bit better. Yeah, exactly right. See whether he can get some burst damage coming through there. Actually going for the Emax second. So, yeah, that is the Home Guard boot influence coming through there. Generally, if you're looking to, I guess, sustain a little bit more, go the tanky route. You go with the W if you want to just blow someone up. You go the E. I mean, this is Assassin Pony, right? Yeah, exactly right. Right. Sheen, Max E, like, get in their face. Yep. Poof them to death. I mean, look, Ryu's certainly been getting in their face, so I'm pretty sure he's... Uh-oh. Oh. Got the blue buff. Maybe a little bit too much in there. Cheese doesn't seem that upset, actually. Maybe that was intentional, but probably not. Yeah, no, I don't think so. Cheese likes his blue buff, but, you know, Cheese, you're 5 one zero. Maybe share some love to the rest of the team. Yeah, he's doing well, actually. There you can see... Those two major items already completed nice and early on the death cap. Silk Shoes in there as well. And probably a quick void stuff coming through. Catches Juice and look at that poke. Yeah, exactly right. This is a problem with Xerath. He can't face check him. There's still three spells to come out from the ultimate as well if he ever does get in the situation. And Sin right now, their one hope is to control the dragon area. So they're just trying to make sure that that fifth dragon stays on timing. Well, 10 seconds left till dragon number three is going to roll around for Sin. How important is it for oh, him to stop Meister. this? Maybe they'll stop Ryan Meister and said, geez, that was a lot of damage. Good juke of the stun, though. Cheese going to get blown up. Maybe T-Gun pulls him out. Ryu ulties and just eats him. And ignites as well. So, good hook there as well. To Juice going to mean another kill. And immunity just all over Sin. That's two free kills. Yeah, they certainly are, you know. And they can transition into a dragon. More importantly, they can transition it into a baron. And that is what they're going for. Yep, T-Gun gets spotted by a ward. So Sin might just have enough info. But I'm going to start the baron off. And it will go down quite quickly. It will. The danger here, though, is the fact that there's a rumble on the map still. And very early in the game means that magic damage will be doing some work. It will. T-Gun Lantern in there trying to pull someone out just in case. Baron's getting low. Otherness does have his smite ready. Equalizer goes down. It's very well placed. Dragon gonna, uh, Baron going to go down. It does get taken out there by Otherness. But they're quite low here. They dive into the back of the pit. Rek'Sai will go down to Rosie. But Huey the next target here. Zank just going in. A good hook lands in. Zank cleans him up. Make it to his Hecarim. Going to get the next kill as well. And a worthwhile trade for Immunity. So worthwhile. Four for one and a Baron in the end. Immunity take everything. Now 9,000 gold in the lead. And this is the thing about Immunity. Veteran lineup know how to play well as a unit. And you saw 
Sin, they just look like they've overcommitted a couple of times. They do. I mean, Rosie now just finishing his Rylas, but fairly defensive build. Rymeister still looking to get things going. Kartred as well, falling behind on the Jinx to a Siva. Never what you want to see. And this pony in particular, still hanging out with that longsword that we might never get to know what it's about. But Ryu might even get a blue buff here. He's going oh. in for it. Rymeister gets his blue and gets all the way out, but Juve's not so lucky. Gets hooked by Tigon. Ryu knocks him back with a devastating charge. Another great CC layer, and Sin are going to lose a dragon. Yeah, that has been a couple of times we've seen that combination come through. Very cute work there by Ryu, and you know he's got a longsword as well as the Null Magic, so I am assuming it is going to be a double offensive item, Hecarim, coming through with that Hex Shrinker. That's beautiful there. As Dragon does go over to Immunity, they'll smite that away as Otherness secures that for his team. Four turrets to zero, 13 kills to six, and now a dragon here for immunity, and they're gonna try and look for their fifth tower as they push in the bottom And they've lane. got the death pony behind. He's looking for a flank. They're gonna just push them away. Yep. Immunity right now cannot be stopped. No, Baron up minions as well, and that tower's gonna push the gold lead over 10,000 gold up in under 25 minutes. Immunity, aggressive is an understatement in this game, but boy, is it paid off. Yeah, it certainly has. They've just rolled with every single punch Sin could throw at them, and they've delivered a couple of haymakers in response as well. They have. And to think it all started with that crazy otherness tower dive at level three. Yeah, exactly right. They, you know, any other person would be like, all right, let's try and equalize the lane. Otherness was like, no, nope, going mid, going go back top. top, going back mid. Right, just going pop, Tegan running in, looks for someone, finds Rosie, pops down the equalizer, will rumble, but a lantern's going to help them disengage. Baron up minions still doing work in Sin cannot afford to start losing inhibitor turrets. Yeah, they were trying to zone away because they really can't get in with a Sivir right now. Jesus, cheese. That was disgusting. Zank ults because he can, because yells at people <laughs> and you know, they break the base. I mean, they certainly look, maybe look to dive more, but inhibitor goes down, inhibitor turret falls there as well and immunity put on quite a clinic today. Yeah, seven, one and three from their mid laner. Cheese after having a shocker of a game on Monday. You know, credit to Perfection and Cyborg for really keeping him down, but right now we're seeing what he can do when he gets ahead. I mean, Zenk and Tegan had a great start to the lane as well, but I feel like a lot of that, at least in the early game, was a lot of self-sufficiency here. If Otherness really wants to get the top side of the map ahead, I can kind of see why. Yeah, exactly right. And Ryu, for me right now, is by far the most improved player in the league. He's turned from someone that could pretty much play Maokai and Rumble up there to a legitimate threat. And his Fizz looked great. Now his Hecarim also looks good. Rosie is no pushover up there, and they've been able to really take it to Sin on yeah. that half of the and map. he's on a comfort champion in Rumble here as well as T-Gun eats a fat amount of damage there from those Harpoons. But Zeng just, you know, roaming around, going to keep hoovering up minion waves here. And I agree wholeheartedly about Ryu. He just gets a little bit and starts to carry, and I love that he's been playing more carry-style champions. Yeah, I agree with you, you know. Put a little bit more faith in the guy, and he's come up spades for them. So see whether this is the continued evolution of immunity, especially with more of a facilitation bottom lane starting to evolve. A lot of Sivir coming out of Zeng. And they're just shoveling up waves and making sure the pressure's not stopping. Yeah, I mean, six towers to zero Sin. Don't have very many good options right now with no major buffs up on the map, so I am a uh, Baron's dropped. Oh my god, that damage is ridiculous. Cheese snipes him from downtown. Ryu diving into the back line as well. That's a double there for Zareth. Juve's going to die shortly there as well. And Zank did, did, uh, did go down. Juve will actually get his way to safety. Oh my god, Otherness. Diving in there. T-Gun. He missed the hook. Otherness in trouble. Cheese looks for a stun. Trying to run away from the Chaos Storm, but it's pretty hard to get away from it. Juve <laughs> smites him to death with immunity. A mistake here in the game, Otherness looks a bit silly, but it actually just doesn't matter. Yeah, exactly right. They get another turret. Super Creep's already on the Nexus turrets, and Immunity, just superior vision control. Knew they were in that brush and able to pull the trigger. Otherness, to his credit, might have gone in a little too deep, but at least bought some time for his minions. Yeah, sometimes it's just about, like, proving a point, sending a message, you know? Message well and truly received by Sin, who got just destroyed in that brush. The cheese ultimates, that's... Oh, he honestly, he's so big here at 9, 1, and 4. He's not even use his other spells, I feel like. Yeah, exactly right. Doesn't need to. Just get the huge ultimates across. Saw him delete Cardrid last time around, and this time the whole team was made pay. Yep, and it's not good news for Sin here. They are so far behind in gold. As Immunity going to find Ryanmeister pushing too far up in his top lane. Good flash Turns there, but a flash. better hook by T-Gun. And Otherness gets the kill. You know, he burnt the flash. Probably was going to fall down regardless. Little bit of... Wait, uh, split pushing coming through from Rymeister, which is generally a sign that he's not very happy in how the game is going out, just trying to get as much farm onto himself as possible. Early Void Staff as well. 
but he hasn't had fun this game. He has not, and Ryan Master certainly a player. We've talked about Juves and getting his lands ahead, especially their mid lane. You can see what happens when Ryan Master doesn't get that lead. Yeah, exactly right. You know, maybe Immunity, they look great with Soul Strikes when they were playing Miss Fish and Sank in the uh, jungle position. Little bit less coordination, but now with Otherness, certainly seem to have pulled it back. Yeah, we talked about it. Otherness doing a nice Soul Strikes impression, and that is not an insult at all. He's looked great so far, looked fine last week, looked even better this oh. week. And Otherness finds Juice there after the stun. The Black Shield's there. He doesn't care. Cheese gets the duck, takes out Nunu. Legendary now is the Zerus. And you saw another equalizer going across right now. Immunity just don't care. They want to end the game. Oh, Kadra, that's a dead Kadra. Ryu dives in, trying to clean them up. Actually takes out Rymeister in the backside. Tegan gets the hook down. Four kills for nothing there. He'll take the last inhibitor just as a formality, but Immunity roll all over Sin in this first game. Yeah, and looks like they're going to take it in 29 minutes of play. Ryu, he's going for the more. I love it. He's, oh, it's beautiful. It is beautiful here. Huey has to dodge a couple skill shots. Cheese still looking for more blood, but 11 kills here. Only the one death after the crazy tower dive and immunity. An incredible game here for them. Yeah, wow, what a performance. After giving up first blood and double buff to Rhymeister to fight their way back in, 11, 1, and 5. Cheese's Zera went nuts. And the you know what? Tegan back on a hook champion. Why did he ever leave? I don't know. I mean, he's like saw the Morgana. He's like, you know what? We can do a little bit better. I like more Morgana. I think I like my Thresh a bit better. That was insane. Yeah, it certainly was. And you know, probably not a bad performing member from Immunity that game. A consistent, pretty well together, thought out strategically game. And they just played very well. Yeah, it was great. We're going to get a little bit more as well as we pop outside to Rusty and Atlas. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. And what a ridiculous game. Immunity really storming under the rift, Rusty. Yeah, that's impressive to say the least. Immunity, when they find themselves with any kind of a lead, can just control the game. They look like a completely different side to what we usually have seen from them lately. What an impressive victory. It most certainly was. Absolutely fantastic. And it was off the back of some fantastic skirmishing from this side. Immunity, they seem to have got a lead and they almost forced it. You saw in that early um, 2v2 skirmish, we're going to actually show that to you guys very, very soon at about six minutes into the game. They just wanted to fight. There was an opportunity to back away. Cheese is like, no, 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 I'm going to be flashing forward to try and pick up these kills. And this goes to show Zerith, more of a passive mid laner, wants to farm and scale through. Not Cheese, though. Doesn't matter no. who Cheese is playing, he's going to try his best. So we've got the clip on here. You can see it yourself. We're going to roll the clip straight away. Otherness and Cheese, the epitome of aggression, to say the least. They put down all of this pain. They just did not hit all of the first spell rotations of Spawn mentioned he's earlier, unfortunately. He's so tanky. And does not want to go down. He just put the words into my mouth. But Cheese, in a very bad position, finds himself, you know what? Let's just try and kill everybody. And though it doesn't necessarily work out, he unfortunately just goes down there and then does pick up a trade. This is where Cheese starts to take off. And not just Cheese, T-Gun. Yeah, oh, most definitely. T-Gun was an absolute monster in this game. And that, that's going to be part of our next clip. I just want to go back to this one just for one moment. Just because Cheese... He had an opportunity to sort of fall behind, and we yeah. saw him on his Oriana um, on, on Monday. Things weren't looking great. This guy sort of just kept getting camped there in the mid lane. This time, he died early on. He actually got sort yeah. of first blood taken away from him by sort of a hair's breath, held on, and continued to go for these aggressive plays. It's really fantastic to see him bounce back from a difficult game and really give it his all this time. And that's but, right. Yeah. And I think the, the key difference was the fact that he continued to be so aggressive, but he had otherness constantly there to help him last game when we saw cheese die a lot of times he was kind yeah. of dying by himself this time otherness always there to support him in the wings his best friend essentially from this game and they came through strong together yeah they most certainly did but let's have a look at our next replay because this is going to be where we start to see t-gun really start coming into the into his own and I have to say, like, this guy, MVP this game. T-Gun and Cheese both in this fight right now play phenomenally, and they play so smartly as a team and separately. So before we roll this clip, keep in mind that T-Gun is the one running away from three members, trying to get away from a bad position. But roll the clip and watch how aggressive he turns it around, hitting Cardred of all people. Cheese comes in, puts down ridiculous damage with otherness, and they essentially pick up kills straight off the bat. Rymeister makes his best attempt at a trade, but if we can pause now, we can see Rosie's coming in from the flank, and this is what makes Cheese recoil. You can see Zenk and Tegan both sitting in the bottom side, though, and they start to have their own versions of two 
separate skirmishes against two separate opponents. So roll this clip through and notice how Cheese goes for Rosie and Juice, T-Gun and Zenk, they go for Kajit and Rhymeyer. So both at the same time, finding hooks onto the right targets and finding kills onto their necessary opponents, working in tandem, not together. Brilliant. It was absolutely amazing. And that last death sentence, absolutely yeah. max range. Just ridiculous stuff. And this erupted across the rift for this entire game as well. It was all about immunity, making sure that they were getting themselves into the right skirmishing positions. And we haven't seen T-Gun's threat, and I really hope that this has sort of opened the door for him to get into more of these playmaking champions that really want to get in amongst it, right in melee range, and put the boxes down. I mean, it could have been any other champion with sort of that engageability. That's what I want to see from T-Gun. T-Gun, when he plays aggressively, when he finds a lead, he just starts to play with this confidence that is just unbelievable yeah. and makes that confidence work, just psychs everyone out, hits all of the relevant hooks. We saw it twice in that last fight as an example. Yeah, I mean, Cheese did work, T-Gun did work, and we do have one more replay to show you, I believe, about it all. And before we actually get into this replay, keeping in mind that all of the early skirmishes from that dragon fight started to snowball more and more in favor of immunity. The fact they found that gold lead just made them further ahead in items. The aggression they show in... This is where they completely catch Sin out at red buff. So we'll roll the clip out. Sin getting over aggressive in their positioning, instantly dying. Four man knock up right there from Otherness. T gun in the fray, throwing his box down as Cheese uses that ultimate, gets an instant double kill. The side of Sin left completely in shambles from this. And it's just ridiculous how well every individual member played. But if you had to give it to one person, Max. It has to be T-Gun. An absolute monstrous performance on that Thresh. I mean, I guess in that last replay, we saw the fact that Cheese reduced ridiculous yeah. ultimate damage. They locked down those three targets and this is from superior vision and the fact that they had control around the map at this stage they were fairly far ahead but being able to create these particular moments was off the back of so many fantastic hooks, so many brilliant plays around the map. That's right. All of this gold lead, all of the fact that they could find themselves so far ahead was on the back of fantastic skirmishing and vision control namely from T-Gun the support enabling yeah. people, even Ryu hitting the amazing ultimates to enable a Xerath stun to come out in early game. Every trade was just on the back of strong vision control decision making and then just ridiculous hooks to boot yeah absolutely outstanding play from t-gun i want to give a mention to ryu as well i'm really glad that you brought him up because of course like this guy has been improving so so much spawn said it before and if we were going to give a most improved player across this split it's most definitely Ryu in my book. Of course, Ryu has been exceptional in, in this split, particularly as the later the weeks go on. He has yeah. just performed more and more. He is most definitely a fantastically improved player. But ladies and gentlemen, we have Chief Swiffer waiting alongside with Pastry Time and Spawn to share his thoughts on the game. Thank you very much, Alison. Yes, we are indeed joined here. Spawn, of course, is still here, but Chief Swiffer, the mid laner of the Chiefs. First of all, Swiffer, I have to ask you honestly, just about the mid lane matchup here. Yep. Zeroth versus Victor. I know you've been playing a lot of Victor personally, yep. both in solo queue and in the OPL. What do you think of the matchup just at face value? So I think that uh, Victor doesn't do too well into Zeroth. I think that's why Cheese kind of picked it as a, as a counter, counter matchup. Um, in that same vein, I think it wasn't a true 1v1 in the mid lane. I sure. mean, you have two very kind of mid centric teams. So both kind of rely on the mid laner to snowball in order to carry them to a victory. And so in that respect, you saw a lot of action mid early. Yeah, and um, so basically, whichever mid laner got ahead would uh, just snowball the team, as I said. Yep. So, so then in the same vein, you got to drag it out a little bit more, look at yep. it as a 2v2, and then you got to question the Nunu pick. Why did yep. they go with Nunu, especially with Azir banned? Well, Jeeves has really been trying to pick up Nunu for quite a while now, and you saw with the early kind of jungle invade that didn't work out too well when um, Otherness was actually able to steal the red buff, and that kind of really set Jeeves behind, because if he was able to control the Rek'Sai's movements all early game, then that would have freed up the lane uh, in mid lane, and then he would have been able to have all kind of pressure around there, so yeah. Yeah. What about like the crazy dive that came? You mentioned, you know, the duo lanes that are coming through the mid jungle yeah. synergy. I know you're very familiar with that sort of assistance uh, early on in your career. But I mean, I would say, honestly, if I'm Rhymeister, that happens to me. I get dove and I suddenly get double buffs on first yeah. blood. I'm the happiest mid laner in the world. Oh, well, we, we have a phrase on that on our team. It's called doing the domo. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, that was, that was great. I remember, I remember when that used to happen to me quite frequently. And that, was, was, that was really good. I felt really empowered throughout the entire <laughs> game. But uh, not so much anymore. I feel like that that kind of was just nerves coming through from otherness. Because uh, I think, is this his first professional APL game? I think that's his second one now. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, I mean, like, it's it's difficult to perform under this kind of pressure. So I think that was just nerves coming through from him and Victor running Ignite, which was surprising. Yeah, and then, of course, yeah. kind of keeping the lane back there. 
What do you think of that? Because other than this, he just went to top and then came straight back to mid. Yeah. Um, no, I think I think what he did was f- fine, I guess, because, you know, as Rek'Sai, like, against Anunu, like, w- what are you really supposed to do? I mean, like, he, he secured his early boss, which was, like, always, like a positive already. But uh, you, you have to exert early pressure. And if you don't, then, like, Nunu's just going to outscale you and then you're going to be kind of irrelevant. So I want to talk about the early pressure that we saw Immunity came through with because there's this big thing right now. Do we go for dragons or do we go for turret pushing? You saw yep. Sin, definitely one of the uh, dragons, but Immunity is through all in on the uh, turret strategy. Why yeah. do you think that teams decide to trade that way? Well, I think it really it comes down to kind of the um, advantages that you get through the lanes at the beginning of the game. If, you're, if you think that you're ahead, you go for the dragon plays because that's something that people are more willing to contest. If you're happy to give up the dragon, like if you're behind, you, you're more than happy to give up the dragon and trade it for more gold so that you're more even for the next dragon fight, for example. It kind of, it delays it delays the game in the sense that like, I suppose, very late game, um, th- like the five dragon stacks, like obviously help you push the base and everything like that. But I think I think it's worth it, yeah. Cool. Yeah, I mean, the McGinn there as well. Just exploded. You saw that gold. Tigon was doing work. Ryu got crazy as well. For you, as far as turning points go, like we talk a lot about the early game, but kind of moving through the mid, what yep. was maybe something you noticed that just... Well, I f- um, so basically, I, th- I think what the turning point was was when the bot lane of IM was able to collapse much quicker than the other bot lane and then in turn help... Um, Cheese get an advantage in the mid lane. Uh, I think Ajim could should probably watch that game and you know, get, <laughs> get some tips from from um, Tigan. Yeah, how to how to you know be there when when you're required. That would be nice. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So more or less, yeah, that's it. Well, um, only nothing but love there, of course, yeah, for his fellow team and support player. There. We're gonna have back outside as we get into our next game. Thank you very much, Pace, for time, and it's fantastic to hear.